My name's Deb Ryan. I'm Deb Ryan. I'm with MHA Petroleum Consultants. So there's been a lot written in the last five years about the great crew change um, because nobody hired in the 80s or for whatever reason couldn't hire in the 80s. And my question's in two parts. Do you think we're headed for that again in another 20 years? And with your experience, is this cyclical nature of people something you've seen in the past? Layoffs now and limited students. We're going to have another dry, dry spill. Yeah, probably. I, um, <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do. I, I agree. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, this is going to have a detrimental effect on the demographics of the industry. We're going to drive out a lot of good people. They're going to go off to other places, and we won't have the, the human capital that we could have. And I'm sorry, I forgot the second half of the question. Is this cycle of people consistent with this cycle of price and like 10 years behind it? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yes might be an okay answer. I fumbled the first question. You three have the next. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, that's really, I, I like the question, I'll, I'll take a stab at this, is because uh, we're talking about SPE. This is an SPE event. And we spent, what, the last the last three or four SPE meetings, every educational event, there were, there were sessions on this, the big crew change, the big crew change, what are we going to do, the big crew change, all the experience, the more senior people are leaving, who's going to have the wisdom? Maybe we should have been talking about something else. How are we going to consistently keep hiring? How do we manage people so that this doesn't happen to us again? Nobody's talking about the crew change now. Now they're talking about the prices of oil. So we are, we're a cyclical industry in our interests also. Uh, there was another question down here. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Sapto Siregar from Bandung, Indonesia. Uh, <clears throat> this young student asked me what I, I was carrying here. It's a passport, so I, because I just came yesterday, I have to carry my passport, so don't afraid it's not a gun or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I'm teaching at Bandung Institute of Technology, and my friend Dr. Sutopo and I came yesterday. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, anticipated the, the downturn also, also of the students' <clears throat> intake. Uh, so what do you gentlemen think uh, we should change uh, to anticipate uh, <clears throat> job, uh, less job employment, right? In, in the 80s, uh, in our department, we put uh, <clears throat> in the curriculum, into the curriculum, we put operation research, which is uh, basically the how to reduce cost. Yeah? Cost reduction was a very, very uh, <clears throat> uh, popular subject at that time. And I know in Arco Alaska, some people were writing about the application of linear programming for pipeline, for facilities at the time. I read, I read the SPE paper on that, Arco Alaska. But uh, <clears throat> my question is maybe to manager, ex-manager, and also to professors, what should, be, should we change in our education, if, if there's any? This morning, Dr. Ella Oskan mentioned we, could have, we have to put some training to our, our students. Uh, and equip them with more uh, wider, wider skills to, to capture more opportunities. Thank you. So to summarize the question, again, from an academic standpoint and from an industry standpoint, what should we in academics, how should we change our curriculum so that we can better prepare the students for the next downturn? 
you're going to make it through this one. For, for the present downturn also, and maybe the next year. N you know. Now and next time. We don't have enough time to change for now. Right. <laughs> at least in our system. <laughs> so do you guys have any, any opinions on that? What should we better be, be better preparing our students for right now to go out into the industry? You, you know, I mentioned to you that I've gone through a lot of these cycles. You, you know, I fundamentally believe that we've got to get our students so well educated that they have options. And you know, the options are like this. Things go down and you can't find a job. And somebody said that, oh, I worked uh, as a, uh, you know, a pumper without pay. And that was a great experience. And I think, you know, that's a decision that the person makes. And our thing is just that, suppose we change the curriculum so the students, they have got more versatility in terms of their fundamentals. Then it comes a time like this, and you're a senior graduate, and you look at your options, and you say, look, it's going to be one million, you know, a shortage of one million doctors in this country by 2025. So if you have got a, a very strong academic background, you don't have to worry about it. You turn around, you go to micro school. You turn around, you go to get a, a PhD, MD degree. Uh, you, you can go to other professions. They need programmers, you know, the one who can write software. There's going to be a shortage of that. My point is this, that we have to strengthen ourselves to a point where things change. If you don't have patience, we can go temporarily somewhere else or for a few years and come back to the, the, the business we love. That's my, my way of thinking about how to prepare students. Just a quick comment. <clears throat> I think we've all said several times that we expect brighter days, and, and I'm particularly optimistic on, on oil prices moving up fairly rapidly. We'll see. Uh, but the other thought that I have is the, the long-held tenets of a mind's undergraduate education. Work hard, figure out how to solve problems, work ethically, work well together. Those are going to be skills, talents that you guys possess now that are going to be very valuable to you, I think very likely in the oil and gas business, but if not, as Hussain said, in whatever you choose to do. I think that is a wonderful, positive note to end our session with tonight. Thank you all. All right, now I would love to uh, invite our Vice President Holly Smith to the stage to hand out some of the gifts to our speakers and the moderator. And, and also, don't forget to buy the raffle tickets because we're going to be uh, announcing the winner uh, after the presentation. So, on behalf of the Society of Petroleum Engineers, our we would like to offer our